Welcome back. This episode is a little bit different. What we're looking at here is the Project Maybach, which is basically a concept car collaboration between Gordon Wagner, the head of design of Mercedes-Benz and the late Virgil Abloh. What they've done here is basically through this cross industry collaboration is, is enrich the conversation around what luxury actually is in the automotive design industry. Now Virgil isn't what we would call a car designer, a trained car designer, but he is an amazingly creative, amazingly talented at the genius level, as we call it, for fashion, for product design, for all types of creative art direction. When I get on the phone with Virgil and I'm thinking of all these ideas and Virgil's able to take all of those ideas and then architect them because he is an architect. It's gonna be extremely fun and let's not say eye-opening to see how he applies all his creative energy and all his creative talent to this project. And my first impression from that front three quarter, that all important front three quarter view, is we're looking at a very, very large car. I've heard that it's over six meters. That's just under 20 feet in length. A two seater in a vehicle that's over six meters long. That is pure opulence. This car is almost brick-like in its architecture but not to say that it's boring or uninteresting. This is actually an interesting design. You'll notice that it has a clear bonnet, clear hood on the top of it, which allows you to see not the engine, but actually the solar charging panels. If you were to compare this vehicle to some other vehicle in this segment, this luxury segment, you might be looking at something like a Rolls Royce boat tail that we've reviewed. You might be looking at Justin Bieber's Uriel. But again, this has its own specific purpose, which makes it even more bespoke. Now, if you look at this purely electric show car from the side, that simplicity of that design of the body side actually tends to accentuate the massiveness of the tires of this off-road vehicle. So you can start to see that there's a purpose to keeping it simple, keeping it luxuriously understated almost in a way. But from a design point of view, there's not a heck of a lot going on and it keeps it nice and clean whilst still making a huge design statement. You'll start to appreciate the flowingness, and this is a very uh, interesting point. I wish we could do it. I'm not sure it's uh, possible in today's methods of production, but we will get there, is the flowingness of the hood, of the bonnet, as it moves up into the windscreen. Now check that out. You don't actually physically see a stop and then a windscreen or a windshield. You'll see it basically flowing up into the curvature that you see there on the top of the vehicle as it goes up and over very smoothly is in stark contrast to that almost geometric construction of the body. It's almost sensual in a way. It's kind of like a, a rolling wave, almost a, a, a gentle flow of the surfaces. And I love that because it really works well. From the front view, I think what strongly supports the fact that this is a Maybach is the amount of attention, the amount of grab that the front grille has on this vehicle. There's almost nothing on the front end except the grille and the headlights. Okay, there's a bit of contrast, let's call it, between the very geometric styled grille. It's almost Parthenon styled, which is very typical of Rolls-Royce and of, of Maybach. But then you look at the headlights and the additional lights that it have, they're round, but they're done in such a segmented way that it gives you almost a break to the organicness of it. And you can see that combined with the type of design they've done to the rear of the taillights. Basically, they're designed and handled in a very similar way. Virgil was very famously, very well connected with nature, with the environment. To what extreme has Virgil gone to keep the eco theme going on the interior? Well, he's actually used coffee beans to actually tint the leather on this vehicle. That's how the color has been derived. Now on the design of the interior, again, I find it full of innovative details. For example, in that six meters plus length of the vehicle, why do you have two seats? Well, in a vehicle like this, you're gonna expect the ultimate in comfort. What you can do here is take the two seats and lay them perfectly flat. And if you're outside in the safari style atmosphere, look straight up through the glass roof, beautiful panoramic vision of the night sky, and grab this, you can actually take the headrests off and use them as fold out blankets to keep you warm at night. The other thing that I really like about the interior of this car is if you do look at it 
from a seating position, driver or passenger obviously, you will have entertainment for you and the passenger. And you can see that if you want, you can actually rotate it and create another screen that is actually twice as large as the original one that is in there when you're driving normally. So very interesting feature to be able to add passenger entertainment. Also, the compass, which adds a little bit of 3D dimensionality to the geometric design, the flat surfaces, as well as when you're on the interior, you need an umbrella in a Rolls Royce, a brawly, when you're downtown in London. When you're on a safari, you probably don't need that brawly as much, but what you will need is an ax. If you open the door on the driver's side, you will have access to your ax. Not what you would expect from a normal OEM. This is a vehicle designed as a concept, as a show car, with a lot of collaboration, a lot of influence from a different profession, what we call the cross-industry innovation sector. And this one with Virgil and with Gordon working together is, in my opinion, a great move, a great thing that we should be doing much more often in our industry. I strongly support that, that we should be thinking as designers how we can benefit other design trends, other design tendencies, other design directions in other fields, because we all have something to give. And Virgil has certainly shown that here. There's no limit. Life is so short that you can't waste even a day subscribing to what someone thinks you can do versus knowing what you can do. This episode is in tribute to Virgil Abloh and the incredible legacy that he has established and left behind. Let's face it, design is a huge field. We are supposed to innovate. That is what we're paid to do. And this is one of the ways, definitely, that will help to bring positive advances to the world of automotive design. Now, the all critical design rating that I typically give to the cars that I'm reviewing, it has been professionally designed because Gordon is the consummate professional in the world of design. But again, it's not designed to be a centrally attractive vehicle. It's more of a purpose-driven design. And in the sense of looking at it as a purpose-driven design, I would rate it highly. I would give it something probably in the range of, and let's call it an 8.8 .8 because they're nice symmetrical numbers. Eight is a beautiful number. We'll give it an 8.8 .8 and leave it at that. I'd love to know your opinion because I know this vehicle here is quite at the upper end of the segment. So a lot of you would be nervous to drive something like this in such an environment. But if you had your choice, what would you design in a safari-like type environment? At any rate, I'd love to hear your opinion, see what you think about this vehicle. Does it bring something new to the game or is it just a wishful thinking sort of wet dream type of design. Send your comments in. I'll look forward to reading them and I will see you again in our next episode.